All right. Good to see you here this evening. Welcome to the midweek service. Thanks for coming through the rain and uh, being in church tonight. Take a songbook. We'll start by singing together. Maybe this is appropriate. Springs of living water and uh, plenty of that out there. But let's sing 327. Let's stand together to sing it. 327. Bob will lead us tonight. I heard it in the barren land of sin and shame And nothing satisfying there I found But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came Where springs of living water did abound Drinking at the springs of living water Happy now am I, my soul is satisfied Drinking at the springs of living water Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. How sweet the living water from the hills of God. It makes me glad and happy all the way. Now glory, grace, and blessing are the path I've got. I'm shouting hallelujah every day. I'm drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my they satisfy, drinking at the spring of living water. Oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. Oh, sinner, won't you come to lead to Calvary? A mountain there is flowing deep and wide. A Savior invites you to the water free, where thirsting spirits can be satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water, oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. Good singing tonight. And uh, let's open with a word of prayer together, shall we? Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be together here in the middle of the week. And uh, thank you for your goodness and your watch care over us. And Lord, we bow here at the beginning of the service and ask you to meet with us tonight. Lord, all is vain unless the spirit of the Holy One comes down. Lord, we don't have a desire just to get together to say, I went to church on Wednesday night. Uh, we, do wanna, we do have a desire to say, God met with me tonight. And the Spirit of God spoke to my heart tonight. And so, Lord, I pray that as we sing the songs of God and as we fellowship together and we uh, give of what you've given to us, and then as we study your word tonight, the Holy Spirit of God, you'd use those things in our hearts and lives to form us and shape us and make us more like Jesus Christ. Lord, have your way in our midst here this evening is our prayer. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Well, let's turn to 429 together. 429 onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war. We're going to sing that first, third, and last together. 429. On that first, all together. Onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on. Glory, Lord. 
Well, our missionary letter this evening is from the Mahaneys, and uh, they are missionaries to our military in Shreveport, Louisiana. There's a big Air Force base there, and uh, it says here the, and bear with me, either my eyes are blurry or this sheet is. I'm not sure which it is, so I'll do my best I can here. Um, it says, fast start, then Corona. Uh, we pray all is well in your small part of the world. We're praying God will give wisdom to our world leaders and doctors to find a way to stop this virus soon. This is a dark time in the world, but I'm thankful that we have the light of the world that promises us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. This is also a great opportunity for Christians to do what God told the Apostle Paul to in Acts 26, 18, during his conversion testimony, quote, to turn to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. We hit the ground running in 2020. There have been so many choices to make already this year with so many of our families leaving this past year. Welcome to life in the military. We started to do some regrouping. It's always such a blessing to Susie to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with the ladies and to get to know them better on a much more personal level. We both love to invest in the lives of our military families. The new ladies' Bible studies on base were going great until the coronavirus put a stop to just about everything, including these studies. There were a lot of new faces, and the growth and input of these ladies were such a blessing to Susie. And she was just starting to wrap up one of her winter Bible studies in the book of James before everything came to a halt. She will finish that up when we are able to meet again, and then she is planning to start a new study on the 23rd Psalm. She looks forward to seeing what God will teach her and the ladies in this new study. She encouraged her ladies to be women of prayer in 2020, and she made each of them prayer journals and is excited to see them grow in their faith as they become women of prayer. There have also been several changes in our, li our lives as well. Susie's 75-year-old mother uh, that lived alone in Ohio has been sick for a while and to the point where she cannot live alone anymore. And last year was a very hard year for her, and the beginning of 2020 has not been any better. Susie made six trips to Ohio since October to be with her, to be with her mother. And after several hospital stays and doctor's appointments, Susie and I made the decision to move her permanently here to Louisiana. She is currently staying in our guest room and seems to be settling in just fine. Pray for Susie, as this will add more work to her already full plate. Susie will make one more trip to Ohio soon to get the rest of her mother's items and to do the final cleaning and inspection on her apartment. More change are coming. With spring here, we will once again face more changes at the base and the servicemen's center. Most of the top command sections will change within the next three months if and when the military lifts their stop movement order for all troops. We are currently not sure how this will impact us once the stop movement is lifted, but we do know that God is still in control. We pray for a continued good working relationship with the new command section once the new command section arrives. The servicemen center activities have stopped for the time being. That means no more parents nights out and no crawfish boil and other fun activities that we normally use the center for. And then they list some prayer, prayer requests here that none of us have any symptoms or any uh, God keep us safe from the virus. The, the church there is simply live streaming and not having actual services. Um, they are in a shelter in place for the next 15 days. Uh, the base is open only to uh, essential personnel only. And... Um, Rick was supposed to have a kidney stone broken up, but all elective surgeries were canceled indefinitely. Keep him in your prayer. And his occupational and physical therapy was canceled for two weeks and could be extended even longer than that. So uh, keep those things in your prayers from the Mahaney's working with the military down in Louisiana. All right. Well, get your prayer guide. Anybody not get one, need one? Put your hand up and they'll get it to you. All right. And uh, regular, as far as the Friday night, we'll have a RU right here. Uh, so those of you who 
uh, had a few weeks off. Uh, let's get back on the horse and uh, let's get riding again on Friday night, seven o'clock right here for the RU program. All right. And then, of course, uh, Sunday services at uh, 9 30, 10 30, and 5 30. And uh, we sent out an email to most of you. I hope you've gotten that. And uh, we're going to hold off on the picture and the picnic and all that kind of thing. Uh, hold that off for a few weeks and uh, we'll just kind of just meet on Sunday and see how that goes. And uh, hopefully we'll see some folks we haven't seen in a while. And uh, we'll look forward to a good day on Sunday, uh, May the 3rd. All right. On the inside there. Oh, on the back. If you want to add where it has other requests. Um, Leanne asked, we put her sister on here. Uh, Leanne's sister is Kim Kempton. Kim Kempton, K-E-M-P-T-O-N. That's Leanne's sister, and she uh, talked to her yesterday, and she's lost her job uh, right during this time, and so uh, we request prayer for her, all right? Then our praise reports on the inside. I have 2625 received a date. I can update that for you. We've had some come in the mail this week. And uh, we're over three thousand dollars now. Three thousand twenty-five is the total so far for the missionary relief fund uh, for those missionaries. So that's a blessing, and uh, you still have opportunity to give towards that if the Lord leads you to do so. Just mark it missionary relief, and we we're going to be sending those checks out here probably the end of this week or the very first part of next week. All right, and we got seven hundred for the Dryden's home purchase uh, that we'll be able to send down to help with that purchase of a home, and then continue to pray for. The the church requests and ministries. I, I didn't get an update uh, from uh, Mrs. Meeks about the surgery today for Brother Gary Meeks, but uh, when we get that, we'll try to get that out on the prayer line and on our Facebook page as well. But I continue to pray for Brother Gary. All right. On the health list, if you would, at the very bottom there, add another name in. Uh, this is Abigail. I'm not sure how you pronounce the last name. It's it's spelled F-I-L-L-A. Well, it says Phila, Phila, or Phila, or Figa. There's, a, I don't know, but it's, a, this is a wife of a co-worker of Rob Hunt. And during a home invasion, she was shot in the face. Uh, she is under facing several, obviously, very serious surgeries. And so... Uh, Rob asked if we could make sure we get her on our prayer list and be praying for Abigail and for the surgery she's going to be facing and for recovery for her. All right. And I appreciate you doing that. Of course, the other names on the list, we continue to lift those up in prayer, praying for those in authority, our leadership in our country through this time, uh, those in our military, uh, those who are battling cancer, uh, our salvation list, and for the Lord to save these folks and the unreached people groups another 10 in the land of india and then of course our missionaries highlighted by the mahaney's uh this evening all right and uh brother xavier's here come on up brother xavier we'll have you lead us in our prayer tonight they had a good meeting sunday night up in mansfield and uh a uh, real good time there with that church, and uh, it's good to have him with us this evening. He'll lead us in our prayers. He prays audibly. Pray along with him silently, and we'll unite our hearts together in prayer right now. All right? Let us All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this time that uh, you brought us here tonight. Thank you, uh, Lord, uh, for your promise of meeting with us, Lord, where uh, two or three are gathered. Uh, that there you are in the midst, and we thank you for that great promise and for the many promises in the Word of God, and we look forward to learning many more things tonight. Uh, but we uh, we ask you to, to meet with us tonight and to help us, Lord, and uh, there's some, uh, many needs here that we have listed, and, and uh, we pray for your mercy, Lord, and we pray for your help, and uh, we pray for the Mahaneys as the, they're doing the work there down in uh, Louisiana with the military, and we pray that you'll continue to uh, allow them uh, some uh, grace, uh, space for grace, Lord, that they can uh, witness and uh, work with the folks uh, in the military and their families there. And we thank you for the great uh, impact they've already had uh, with the ladies' Bible studies and different things and the ministries there. I pray that you again open that up soon, Lord, for them and help them to, uh, Lord, if they even have an opportunity to go and just minister to somebody, if you'll grant that to them. And I pray that you'll uh, keep them safe, Lord, from the virus. And uh, please help Brother Rick as he's... Uh, awaiting still some procedures that he's not able to, to have right now and pray that you'll uh, just um, make a way for that to be soon uh, to, that'll come through for him and that you'll 
uh, you'll care for him. And I pray for uh, his physical situation that you'll uh, give him grace, Lord, at this time. And um, and that, uh, Lord, he won't be in too much pain or discomfort. I pray that you'll just uh, encourage him and his wife. And thank you for making a way for his, uh, her mom to move down there and that they can keep, uh, take care of her. I pray that you'll uh, just provide for all that. And, and I pray that you'll uh, just make that easy for them and that you'll encourage them. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for... Uh, the many ministries here at our church and uh, that we've uh, not been able to, to have them all at the moment, but we look forward to that being uh, back again soon. And we pray that you'll uh, just make a way for that and uh, help us to uh, pray in the meantime, Lord, as we're getting ready for that and prepare. And I pray that you'll again, work in the hearts of all of us and help us to uh, be really uh, all of us ready, Lord, to get back in the work. And uh, um, we pray for Leanne's sister, God, Kim, who uh, had lost her job now. And I pray that you'll provide for her, God, and, and that uh, you'll comfort her and, and draw her close to you at this time. Lord, if she's not saved, I pray that she would trust you now at this time. And I pray that uh, that she would seek uh, help and seek guidance in your word and, and that she would look to you, Lord, for answers and for help. Um, I know that's what had to happen for me. I had to look, uh, I had to go through some things before I would look up. And I pray that you'll help her, Lord. At this time, help uh, Leanne to be able to be an encouragement to her. And um, Lord, we also pray for um, the men in the prisons and the ministries that we uh, that we've been, our church has been able to have through the prison ministry. And uh, Lord, I pray that the men that uh, we, our, our our men have been able to meet with, Lord, that you'll uh, encourage them, Lord, and keep them close to you in the Word of God right now. And and uh, pray, Lord, and look forward to the time that we'll be able to uh, have our men go back there. And and uh, but, Lord, I, I just pray for your, your help in the meantime uh, on our side for us to be uh, ready and encouraged to get back. And then on their side, Lord, that they'll uh, not, not scatter at this time, Lord, but they'll stay close to you. And uh, Lord, we pray for the many health needs that are listed here. Um, so many, Lord, and I don't know um, really many of these prayer needs myself, but uh, Lord, we know that you are uh, omniscient and uh, we know that you know all these things. And pray that you'll help these folks with the needs that they have for uh, Abigail, uh, Rob Hunt's um, co-worker's wife, who, uh, Lord, has gone through this terrible situation recently. We just pray for your mercy on her, Lord, and, and uh, her husband, and that you'll comfort them, God, and that you'll give them, um, Lord, that you'll give them your grace and that you'll save them, God. I just pray uh, that, that even at this time, if Rob can be a help to them, Lord, that you'll use him and be pleased to do that. And I just pray for your mercy for them I pray they'll be saved, God, and also pray for uh, so many others listed here. Uh, uh, Roy's father, who's going uh, through the prostate cancer uh, situation there at OSU. Uh, Joe, I pray that you'll work in his heart, Lord, and you'll comfort him. I pray, God, that you'll save him if he's not saved, and I pray that you'll encourage uh, Roy and help him to be able to minister to him. And uh, I just pray for your mercy there. I pray for Gary Meeks, God, who's... Uh, recovering from this surgery. Um, I pray for your grace for him, uh, Lord, that you'll um, just work through all the things that he has to be concerned with here. And I just pray that you'll comfort his heart and that the word of Christ will dwell in him richly. And uh, Lord, pray for Paula Ross. And I don't know if she's back in or not. And I know she was recently, but I pray that you'll comfort her, God, and, and give her strength, Lord, and lift her up. And uh, we pray that we'll see her again here soon. And uh, Lord, pray for our country. I pray, God, that you'll be merciful. And that you'll forgive us, God, in our country for for the many things we've done. And we've led the, the world really in wrong uh, things and wrong thoughts and wrong philosophies and so many things, God. But I pray that you'll give uh, your people here in the United States still more time, God, to serve you. Uh, if you're not ready to, to have the have the rapture soon, I pray that you'll just give us time, God, still, and open doors to serve you uh, so that many can be saved here in America and abroad. And I pray that you'll give us that opportunity. Pray for our leadership in, in, in Ohio and in uh, the rest of the country, God, uh, that we're excited to get try to get things going again and try to get back to what we're supposed to do, uh, the work that you've given us. And, uh, but I pray for your protection, God, for our, for our, um, for our church, Lord, uh, for the people, the members of this church, and for the people, uh, their families, and all the uh, – and I pray for uh, our families, God, our extended families and folks, that you would work in their lives to bring them to you at this time. But I pray that you would be – uh, merciful God, and you would uh, just just protect us, Lord, and not see uh, more increases, Lord, particularly among us. And I pray that you'll give us opportunities to witness, Lord, even though this this time is so uh, strange. And and um, 
I do pray for uh, Nick, uh, Proke, and for Sherry, God, that you'll be merciful to them and help them at this time and help them recover, God. And I pray that you'll uh, just uh, help help them not to be short of breath. And we got to pray that you'll just uh, draw close to them as they're praying to you and pray for your mercy for them. And, and um, Lord, the many, many folks here on the, the cancer list, I pray that you'll be merciful here, Lord, and help them. And I pray that at this time, Lord, that these folks, if they're saved, Lord, there could be a great testimony of your grace and that they will uh, be able to share Christ with the people uh, that they're caring for them. And if they're, some of them are not saved, God, I pray that you'll send someone in their life right now uh, to speak to them more, to to help them, to encourage them to, to, to consider your promise through Jesus Christ that they can have ever, everlasting life. Also pray, Lord, for uh, for India. Um, we prayed for India for a while, and I pray that you'll continue to work there and do great works in the, the people uh, of India. And I know the many uh, men that you have that are surrendered to you, or they just uh, they need more training, they need more help, and they need Bibles, and I pray that you'll provide that for them uh, through uh, through our church and through others. And I pray that you'll uh, sustain them at this time, keep their uh, their hope up and, and their hearts focused on you. And, and Lord, we, they, they're, they're uh, looking forward, Lord, to doing the work again. I pray that you'll open doors for that there in India. And I pray you'll save many uh, of these people groups and send, send people, Lord, if it's uh, someone from this church, uh, maybe even. Lord, I pray that you'll send them to, to India to serve you. And uh, I also pray for the military members that are listed here that you'll... Uh, You'll just keep a uh, watch over them, God, and help them as they're serving uh, the country. I pray that you'll uh, be uh, that you'll draw them close to you, Lord, and that they'll be saved, and that they'll live for you and be a testimony in in that in that place. And uh, God, that you'll keep them safe. And I pray, uh, Lord, that you'll meet with us tonight, and we look forward to studying again about the Spirit. I pray that you'll uh, help us, Lord, to desire the fullness of the Spirit. And I pray that the fruits of the Spirit will be evident in our lives, God, uh, by this study and by our fellowship with you. I uh, pray for pastor. He's going to give the message to us, and I pray that you encourage him too. In Jesus' name, amen. 335 in your hymnal. 335. Let's all stand together one more time. There shall be showers of blessing. 335 on that first. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. On that third. There shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O oh Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy just round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, let today be my fault. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy just round us are falling. But for the showers we remain standing for prayer. How about that? You're going to come give the offering anyway. You might as well stay standing and we'll pray and then you can give as the Lord has blessed and prospered you. All right. Father, thank you for the opportunity. It's ours to give as you have blessed and prospered us. And Lord, pray your blessing on our giving this evening that Lord, you'll use the gift that are brought this evening, Lord, for the furtherance of the gospel in this place, Lord, to spread the gospel throughout our area and our state, our country, and yea, through the world, through the missionaries that are supported. Bless this giving tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. That'll work. That's good. Thank you, Sherry. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, and go to Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8, as they shriek with the light. Romans 8, I'd like you to look at verse number 26, if you would please. Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Father, we ask your blessing upon the reading of our scripture here tonight and Lord, other scriptures that we'll turn to this evening. Holy Spirit, as we look into your book that you inspired men to write, we ask that you as the author would be our teacher this evening and especially help us to grasp and understand the important role you play when it comes to prayer and how you're there to help us and to intercede for us and to partner with us as we take our request to the Lord. And I pray that you'll help us this evening to understand what a great, great privilege we have to go to our God in prayer, and what a great prayer partner we have in the Holy Spirit. So bless this study, and open our understanding as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. D.L. Moody once entered a tavern in order to ask the bartender about his two little girls attending his Sunday school. He was told that an atheist club met there every Thursday night, and the owner of the bar was in no mood to offend them. And Moody was pleading with the man on behalf of his girls, and finally the man's heart was touched, and what he said was this, He said, Preacher, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you come down here on Thursday night, meet with the boys in a joint discussion, and when, then you can have my girls in your Sunday school. But if not, it's all off. Agreed, said Moody. As the story goes, Moody went right out and looked up a crippled newsboy who really knew how to pray. And he said to him, Tommy, I need you next Thursday night. When the hour of the meeting arrived, Tommy and the evangelist entered the saloon. It was full of men sitting on whiskey barrels, beer kegs, and even on the bar, eagerly awaiting the coming debate. Moody began by saying, gentlemen, it's our custom to open our meeting in prayer. Tommy, jump up on that barrel over there and lead us in prayer. Tommy began to beseech the Lord for the souls of all present. Tears began to roll down the little fellow's cheeks. The more tender-hearted of the men beat a retreat. Finally, even the hardest men present began to leave until there was no one left except the bartender, Moody, and the praying boy. Moody turned to the father and said, I claim your girls for my Sunday school. And the bartender answered, All right, you win. But that sure is a weird way to fight. And Moody answered, it's the way I win many a battle. Queen Mary of Scotland said, that's Bloody Mary, said, I fear the prayers of John Knox as much as the combined armies of Scotland. Prayer. Someone said, prayer is our greatest Christian privilege. Prayer is our greatest Christian privilege. Probably the area that most Christians would be dissatisfied with. I've never ever in all my years of pastoring ever had anyone come to me for counseling because they were struggling that they prayed too much. 
But often I've talked to folks who have struggled because they just don't pray enough or don't pray consistently enough. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. It's a great privilege. But also, uh, prayer is a great Christian service. It's a great Christian service. Sometimes we think prayer is just getting us ready to serve God. But prayer is a means of serving God as well. Don't ever get the idea, well, we've done everything else. I guess we'll just have to pray. Prayer isn't the last resort. Prayer ought to be the first thing we go to. Uh, Don't think because you're up in years and you can't physically do what you used to do that, well, I guess I can just pray. Oh, don't say just pray. Uh, There's much, much power in prayer. And so uh, you, you can serve the Lord in prayer. It's a great Christian service. But I have to also tell you that prayer is probably the greatest Christian failure. Often, we don't pray. And when we do pray, our prayers aren't answered. You ever wondered why it's so hard to pray? Anybody uh, be honest tonight? You're in church. (laughs) You know what I mean? How it's a struggle at times to pray. Everybody have that problem besides the pastor? Oh, a couple others? Good. You know, it's, uh, and, and you think about that, and you say, man, what's, what's wrong? I love God. I know prayer is good. I know it's what we should do. How come I'm struggling so hard to pray? What, what, what's something, is something wrong with me? And the truth is, uh, there is something wrong. I have an old nature in me, and you have it in you. And I know that the carnal mind or the natural mind is enmity against God. That, that the, 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 the flesh, the old nature in me, that is against the spirit. And the spirit's against the flesh. And so there's, there's always part of you and part of me that doesn't want to do what we know we ought to do. And doesn't want to obey God like we ought to. Listen, that old nature, remember we, we talked about it cannot be It's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. So the flesh, we know oftentimes the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And we give in and we don't pray as we ought. The good news is this. Number one, if you're filling your paper out, is this. The spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Bible calls it infirmity here in verse 26 of Romans 8. The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. The carnal mind, the flesh nature, that's a weakness in us. And this, listen, the sooner off we just admit it and realize it, the better we'll be. A lot of times we, we don't like to admit that we're weak or we're infirmed. We want to deny that we're weak. We want to try to demonstrate that we're not weak. And the truth is, we're weak. And we have to admit that. And it, because, and by the way, number one, we admit it because the Bible says so. Okay? It says our flesh is weak and we'll give in. Uh, someone said, you don't, you don't have to think you have an inferiority complex. You are inferior. <laughs> okay? that's, that's what we are. Uh, and we have to admit that. Why does, why does God allow us to have weaknesses? He allows us to have weaknesses so we know that we must have Him. And we won't rely on ourselves Because we, we get to thinking if we don't have weaknesses, then we want to become independent. And, and we'll be dependent on ourselves instead of depending on Him. And, and when we understand our weakness, then we'll depend on God. That's what, uh, you're, you're in Romans, we'll come back to Romans. Uh, turn to your right to 2 Corinthians. This is what Paul discovered, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You're familiar with these verses. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9. Now remember, this is the Apostle Paul. If you'd have thought, well, anybody's a strong man or a strong Christian, it'd be Paul. 
I mean, certainly he wouldn't have the struggles that us weak people have. Okay? But notice what Paul said. Uh, here, here, verse 9, He said unto me, God said unto Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in, what church? Weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. What did Romans 8 say the Spirit helps us with? Our infirmities. Okay? I'll glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. But I'm not strong in my might. I'm strong in His might. I'm strong in the might of the Spirit. And that will never happen if I think I'm strong. Never happen if I think I can do this. Never happen if I'm relying on my strength. Then, then I'll never look to God for His strength. It's not a matter of that I'm too weak. It's a matter of I may not be weak enough to totally rely on the Lord and allow Him to strengthen me. Now I want you to remember that prayer in the Bible is synonymous with asking. Okay? There's other things that you do when you talk to God, but prayer is asking. The very word means to ask. That's what the word prayer means. So uh, it's not thanksgiving. You can, you can have a time of thanksgiving, but that's not prayer. Uh, it's not adoration. You ought to have time when you adore God and worship God. But that's not prayer. Prayer is asking. Okay? Prayer is asking God for what you need. And we're going to talk tonight a little bit about our prayer partner. Uh, the, most people pray and they don't have any idea whether God's going to answer their prayer or not. We're, we're praying and we just think, man, we'll just pray a bunch of things up there and, and we'll see what God will throw back down at us. Uh, we'll see if something will get answered. And, and to show that, to show that we're, uh, we're not sure whether we get an answer, how excited are we when we get one? Guess what? You don't believe what happened. Man, I prayed, ask God to do this, and you know what? He did. And we're like beside ourselves. We weren't expecting an answer. Where's the, is, there, is there confident prayer? I mentioned Finney a few weeks ago. How what kept him from conversion for many years was watching Christians pray and never get any answers to prayer. He couldn't understand why, why are you going through this thing of praying if God never hears or answers your prayer. Good question, isn't it? I don't know about you, but if I'm praying, I sure like to have some answers. I wanted God to hear me when I pray. There's a great deal of difference. Let me, let me make sure you understand this. There's a great deal of difference between saying your prayers and praying. Okay? I'm not talking about just reading prayers out of a book and saying prayers. Counting beads and saying prayers. I'm talking about praying and asking God. And, and knowing that what you're asking is what God wants you to ask Him for. Well, how can we know that? Well, here we go. Ready? The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Back to Romans 8. Back to Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The word intercession means the Holy Spirit goes with us to the Father. He helps us plead for our needs and even for our wants. But He's there to help us. So here's, here's what we have to do, alright? Number one, we don't know what we need. Do you understand? Uh, the, the, the Bible says we have infirmities, we're weak. But it says here, we know not what we should pray for as we ought. You ever felt that way? Oh, how, what, what does God want here? Should I buy this? Should I not buy this? Should I go here? Should I not go here? Should I move here? Should I take this job or not take this job? How, how should I pray about this? We don't know what we should pray for as we ought. So we don't know what I need. All right? And, and by the way, you say, well, I just feel in my heart. Well, the heart's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So maybe that's not what God wants. 
And, and so, uh, I, have to, I don't know what I need. But number two is this. The Holy Spirit does know what I need. The Holy Spirit does know what I need. So, I go to Him and ask Him to find my needs. Or to tell me my needs. And then write down what the Holy Spirit tells you. In this, well, I'll come to this in just a minute. All right? And then I can go to the Father in prayer. And the Spirit of God goes with me. All right? This is a daily journal that we use in our You Inside program. This is a, it, it divides it into five different areas. But the importance I, I'm going to point out for this is not the scripture reading section, but this next section. Uh, take this out. This is a personal prayer time. And it's divided into four sections. Praise, and then needs, and then forgiveness, and then protection. But there's an important word after each one of those. You can't see it right from where you are. But it's in parentheses and it's pause. So in other words, when I say, okay, I'm going to spend some time praising God. And we ought to praise God. God inhabits the praises of His people. But I don't just start praising God for what I want. I pause and I wait and I say, Holy Spirit, what should I praise you for? What should I praise God for? Hear that? That's quiet. And you listen. And the Spirit of God will start bringing things into your mind. And you write those down. That's what God wants you to praise Him for. Okay? Now the same thing comes true when it comes to my needs. I don't just get out my grocery list and start going down the list of everything I'd like to get, everything I'd like to have. No idea if God wants me to have it or not. But it's my list, so I'm going down it. I should say, Lord, what are my needs? And I say, Holy Spirit, what do I need? Who knows better what I need, me or him? Okay? Now, he knows He knows God better than I do. He is God. And he knows me better than I know me. Right? So, he knows what I need. It's, it's, it's really, when you think about it, how, how simple it is. When you have a child, who knows better what the child needs? You or that child? You do. You're the parent. They, they'll say, what do you want for breakfast? Ice cream. Okay, we're in. No. You say, no, you can't have ice cream for breakfast. Huh? They, 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 they get a, a bunch of candy. They're ready to eat it all at one time. You say, no, you know that. You're going to get sick. But that's okay. They're ready to go. So you know what's best. Well, God knows what's best. But why don't I go to Him? Why don't I ask the Holy Spirit? It says, notice what it says in verse 27. He that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So He knows that, that God obviously knows the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. And so He knows our heart. The heart is deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God. God knows. And so God knows. And so when I go to the Father and present my petitions, the Holy Spirit goes with me who led me and make the petitions. Now, if I'm asking God that for which He, through the Holy Spirit, has prompted me to ask Him, do you think I'm going to get answers to prayer? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm asking him for what he told me to ask him for. And then you're going to get answered to prayer. That's why the Bible says if we pray according to the will of God, we know that he hears us. And if we know if he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. But most of the time, we go to prayer and we don't even think about the Holy Spirit. We don't even consider inviting him to go with us to the throne of grace. Not to try to get our own way, but for me to know what does God want me to have. So if I go to the Father, before I go to God in prayer, I want to ask the Holy Spirit. 
I, I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, I think I need a new Lexus SUV with heated seats. And, and the Holy Spirit might say, well, you might need another vehicle, but I think you might be able to get along without a Lexus with heated seats. And I say, okay. And, and uh, he, he'll help me to ask just for another vehicle. Or I, I need a new suit of clothes. And I want to, uh, Lord, I'd like to get a Joseph E. Banks $700 suit of clothes. And Holy Spirit says, I think you do well with a J.C. Penny 199 suit. And, uh, and, and he's right. So you, you make the list out, you see. And then you, uh, it's what the Spirit of God, as I've listened to him, has led me to go ask God. And then as I'm asking God, the Spirit of God is there to plead as well. But we have to get the, the, the mind of God on the matter and the petitions uh, as we present them to God as I pray in the Spirit and with the Spirit. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, would you please? Ephesians 2. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Now, let's talk about Jesus in verse 18. For through him, that's Jesus, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Notice the word both. Because we, we pray to God the Father through Christ the Son and with the Holy Spirit. That's how the prayer access works. Our access to God is through the Son. If it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ and, and the veil being rent, we have no access to God. So we have access to God because of the death of His Son and the blood shed by Jesus Christ. And our prayer partner to go with us into the throne room of God and the presence of God is the Holy Spirit. Now, look at Matthew chapter 18. First book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 18, a principle Jesus was teaching his disciples. Matthew 18 and verse 19. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth, has touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Now the word agree there, is a, is a word, we get our word like symphony, our harmony, all right? So in other words, when I get in harmony with the Holy Spirit, and I get in agreement with the Holy Spirit of God, then I know that what I'm asking will be done for me by God in heaven. The secret is, I want to be in harmony with the Holy Spirit. What is... In fact, Acts 15. Turn to Acts chapter 15. I'm glad I have a Bible, aren't you? Acts 15. You, you see this more, you just illustrate it here, I think. Acts 15. Look with me at verse number 28. It says, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. Do you see the agreement? There's an agreement here as they're seeking what should they lay on these new Christians that are getting saved, these Gentile Christians. How uh, Some wanting to lay a lot of the Jewish law and Jewish customs on them. And they said, okay, what are we going to allow them to do or not allow them to do? And, and they were seeking the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to be in agreement with the Holy Spirit of God on this. A fellowship between the Holy Spirit and the apostles. I think they communed with the Holy Spirit of God until there was a harmony. There was an agreement between them. And then they... They brought it to the apostles. Uh, James chapter 4. Again, you're familiar with this passage, I believe. James chapter 4. But I think you'll see it illustrating what we're talking about right here. James chapter 4. Uh, 
uh, ye lot, verse 2, ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight in war, yet ye have not because you ask not. But in the book of verse 3, ye ask and receive not. Because, why church? You ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. You ask amiss. Let me tell you what amiss. Amiss, when you look it up, you know what it means? You ask wrong, faulty, out of order, improper. You're out of order. Why am I out of order? Because I'm asking without consulting the Holy Spirit. I'm asking without asking the Spirit of God, what should I pray for? When I pray that way, I ask amiss. And why do, I, why do we pray and we have not? Because we ask amiss. We ask out of order. See, we're asking improperly. It's literally what amiss means. And so we miss answers to prayer because we're on our own and we're not consulting the mind of the Spirit. And oftentimes we would say, well, and that's why uh, you read one of the great books on prayer was written by Dr. John R. Rice called Prayer, Asking and Receiving. Uh, and, and he brings out so clearly in that uh, book that the answer to prayer is receiving. We often hear, and he deals with it in that book, about how God always has three answers to prayer. Yes, no, and wait. And uh, But... But you won't find that in the Scripture. Now, you may wait. You know why? Because we're asking amiss. And God is waiting for us to get in line with the Holy Spirit of God. When we pray and we pray and we pray and we don't get any answer, then we ought to stop and say, wait a minute. Go to the Holy Spirit and say, reveal to me what the mind of God is on this. Show me why this prayer can't be answered. I'm obviously, I'm, I'm out of order here somewhere. I'm improper somewhere. And show me what that is. And God will wait because He's trying to get us to get in harmony with the Holy Spirit and harmony with His will so He can give us what we're asking. You know, in fact, I hadn't planned to say this, but look at Luke 11. Luke 11. See, because of our not getting answers and even though asking amiss, we don't want to admit, well, I'm probably wrong. We say, well, God said no. We put it all on God instead of putting it on us. Okay? Because notice how Jesus, te Jesus taught on prayer here in Luke 11. He's teaching about the importunity of the friend who came and needed loaves at midnight. But notice how he taught them. Because he said in verse 8, though he will not rise and give him because of his friend, he's his friend. Because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be what? Seek, and ye shall knock, and it shall be. For every one that asketh, does what? He that seeketh, him that knocketh, it shall be open. Where's, where's no and wait? In those verses. It's not there, is it? See? But we have to make sure, again, we know from, from the importunity, that isn't just asking one time. That is ask and ask and ask and ask and keep on asking. And, and the reason we do that is, is if we're asking amiss, we can ask the Holy Spirit to show us that. And we can change the prayer to receive what we're looking for. Okay? And God gives us what we're asking for. That's why later on in that passage, He said, if, if, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will He give him a stone? Of course not. Okay? If He ask a fish, is He going to, for a fish, give him a serpent? No. No, if you ask for a fish, what are you, what are you going to get? Fish. He said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more shall Heavenly Father give good gifts to those that ask Him and, and give the Holy Spirit to them to ask Him? So He's saying, listen, if you know how to give good things to your children, don't you think I know how to give good things to my children? And I'll give you what you ask for. But you have to ask, we know, in harmony with the Spirit of God. In, in unison, in unity with God's Spirit. And if we're not, 
we have to go to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to help us. But if you'll go to Him before you make out your list and ask Him for what you should be asking for, you're going to see a, a drastic change in answers to prayer as we seek the mind of the Spirit. So just as, just as the Spirit, when we're filled with the Spirit, has He'll speak inwardly to people that we speak outwardly to, you know, as a soul winner, it's not a matter of being a good salesman. It's not about having the gift of gab. Okay? You got, you got more, and, and, and please don't, don't be offended anybody, but you got more, more going for you as a Christian giving the gospel to people than the Avon lady or the Mary Kay lady. Okay? Than, than any kind of salesperson. They're just trying to sell a product. You have the Holy Spirit of God helping you because you're giving the gospel. And so as you, you want the fullness of the Holy Spirit, so as you speak audibly, He's speaking inwardly. That's what happened to you when, when you got saved. You heard the preacher preach or somebody was witnessing to you and you heard what they were saying, but inside of you was the Spirit of God saying, that's the truth. You need to believe that. You need to trust Jesus as your Savior. You didn't know that's who that was, but that's who that was. <laughs> he was dealing with you. And He was drawing you to the Savior. And so when we go to God in prayer, once we've met with the Spirit of God, listened to Him, wrote down what He I should ask for, then I go to God and guess who's going with me? The Spirit of God is. And as I talk to God, He talks to God. And He intercedes, He pleads on my behalf to receive what I need. And you'll find out in the journal uh, there, you do the same thing with forgiveness. You know, we all have, uh, we all have selective memory. Hmm? You know that it's, it's, it is much easier to remember somebody else's fault than it, faults than it is my own. Did you know that? Do any of you have that problem? And, uh, you know, you and that's why when when your spouse says, I think you said this, you probably better believe them. Because you don't remember. We have selective memory. Let me tell you something. When it comes to asking forgiveness. God has a better memory than we do. And so we pause before we ask forgiveness and we talk to the Holy Spirit and we ask him to bring to our remembrance things I've said things I've done, things I've thought that I shouldn't have thought. The thought of foolishness is sin. The Lord, bring those to my mind and I'll write them down and ask God to forgive me. Because He'll remember. I think, that's why I think David prayed in the Psalms, Lord, cleanse me from secret faults. I don't think he meant secret to other people. I think he meant secret to himself. Cleanse me from faults I'm not aware of. Things I've done wrong that I'm not aware I've done wrong. Maybe sins I've even committed against you that I'm not aware that I've done. Things I've said to people or done to people that I'm not aware I've done. God cleanse me from those. And He will. But we have to involve the Holy Spirit of God. He makes intercession for us. And when that happens, listen, when you're when you're wanting to be in agreement with the Holy Spirit and in agreement with the Spirit of God and you're taking time to talk to Him, you know what the Bible says? If we delight ourselves in the Lord, He'll give us the desires of our heart. Now, you think, oh, He'll give me whatever I want. That's not what it says. It says we delight in God. He gives, 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 gives. And the, so the desires we have are what He has given to us. And then He'll give us those desires. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. See, God isn't up there trying to make it difficult for us to get prayers answered. But there is a proper way to come to God. And that's why He's given us the Holy Spirit. That's why he said in John 15, verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Wow, that's like a blank check. See, when you're in communion with the Spirit of God, 
And, and by the way, you're never in communion with the Spirit of God if you're not in God's Word. If you're not abiding in God's Word, you're not abiding in the Spirit. You're not filled with the Spirit. When that happens and you have that harmony and that relationship with the Spirit of God, God says, I can, I can trust you that whatever you'll ask for is in agreement with what I want you to have. So you can ask what you will and you'll receive it. It's an amazing promise. John 15, 7. So He helps in our weaknesses. The Spirit intercedes for us. And then number three, He intercedes for us concerning things which we do not ask for. That we do not ask. Again, the intercession of the Spirit going before God to ask on our behalf. He tells God not only about the needs that we have written down, but the Spirit of God will continue to ask for things that we forget to ask for. You ever, you ever thought about something? Or thought about something you needed? And then it was provided for you? Or, you know, it's like, wow, here it is and I didn't even pray for it. That ever happened to you? I didn't even have a chance to pray and God just gave it to me. You say, Lord, thank you. What happened? The Spirit of God knew you needed that. And He made intercession for you when things when you didn't even pray about it yet. You were going to or you intended to, but you didn't even get to. Or, you ever been praying? And you're praying about something and all of a sudden something else comes into your mind to pray for? Or someone else to pray for? I was reading in preparation for the message in a, a uh, pastor was talking about how always obey the prompting of the Spirit to pray. One way you listen to the Holy Spirit and be in tune with the Spirit is when He prompts you to pray for someone or for something, stop right then and pray. And he, he, was, at a, he was in seminary and working midnights, and he was getting off and driving home at 4.30 in the morning. And it was the end of the week. He was tired. And he was having trouble staying awake. He said, I had the radio up full blast. He says, I'm literally slapping myself, trying to keep myself awake. And he said, and I, I just couldn't stay awake. He said, the truth is, he said, pulled into my driveway when I woke up. I have no idea how I got to my driveway. I don't remember anything. There I was. Shut the key off. Walked into my house. He said, now I'm very wide awake. <laughs> and if you've ever been there, you probably understand that. He said, I walked in. It's quarter of five in the morning. He said, and I went to my bedroom and my wife is sitting up in the bed. And that's very strange. I said, what are you doing? She goes, do you have trouble coming home this morning? He goes, man, did I have trouble? He said, I'll be honest with you. I was having time staying awake. I don't even remember getting into our driveway. How I got there. And she goes, the Lord woke me up at 4.20 this morning and prompted me to pray for you. And I started praying. And he says, I believe I'm here today because my wife listened to the Spirit of God and began to pray for me. She could have said, it's 420. After all, the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But she listened. Every time you're prompted by the Spirit to pray, pray. Here, the, the Bible talks about that the Spirit of God will begin to pray for us just like He previously prayed with us. You know, there's times that as you pray, especially if you're really burdened about someone or a situation, that sometimes the words just don't come. You're just not quite sure the words fail you. Things just kind of get all stuffed up. And our vocabulary seems inadequate to express what we're trying to get out with God. 
And when that, when those times come and the burden is so great, and, and we're just having a difficult time with the words, you know what the Bible says? The Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. He takes the groanings to God. Now, this is not, some people read that and they say, oh, the, you know, the praying in the Spirit is when you have these groanings and they're talking about speaking in unknown tongues or a heavenly language. But you're reading into something that's not there. These are groanings that cannot be, can't be uttered. So there's no sound here. I can't utter them. Who's uttering those? The Spirit of God is. Before God. It's not me. I don't utter those. He takes care of our inability to express ourselves. He's bringing those petitions to God. Because there's some things, and by the way, so He takes those things to God that I have a hard time expressing to God are really getting the words out to God. The Spirit will help intercede for me. But He also does this. There's things that I need that I don't know I need. There are things I forget when I go to prayer. But the Holy Spirit doesn't forget. He knows what those things are and so He intercedes before the Father to give me what I need. You see, Paul, the example is Paul when he sought the Lord three times that he'd remove this, what he called the thorn in the flesh. He didn't think he needed it. But God had to convince him, you do need that. And so Paul said, I understand now, you know what's best for me. And that's how God works with our prayer. We pray and say, Lord, I want a sunshiny day. And God says, I think you need a cloudy, rainy day. Lord, I, I want uh, good health. Well, I think you need some sickness. Lord, I want victory today. And God says, I think you need to go through a defeat today. Lord, I want all smiles today. And God says, well, you may need some defeats today. Or some tears. You see, that's where Romans 8, right after, it's no coincidence, by the way, Romans 8, we did 28 and 26 and 27, but 28 follows right after that. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Because God knows that He can work it all together for good and for our good. An old preacher prayed this prayer. Dear Lord, I hate baking powder. Dear Lord, I hate flour. Dear Lord, I hate baking soda. And dear Lord, I hate salt. And he listed several other things that he hated. And then as he prayed, a smile came across his face and he said, but Lord, put, put all those things together and Stir them up and put them in the oven and cook them. And I sure do love biscuits. That's pretty much what Romans 8.28 is talking about. Might be individual things that we don't really care for. But God says, no, I'm working all that together for your good. For your good and ultimately for His glory. So let's review. The next time you go to God in prayer for your needs, will you talk to the Holy Spirit first? And there's, I got a bunch of these journals back there. You ought to pick one up and, uh, and see if you can't just take that time to write down what the Spirit of God speaks to you about and what He tells you about your needs. Ask, just ask Him to help you make out your prayer list. And, and, and to ask for the things that you know that He knows God wants you to ask for. Ask Him to impress upon your heart 
the things you should ask. Then when you go to the Father in prayer, just ask the Holy Spirit to go along with you. and Go into the throne room with you in prayer. And know that He goes with us on our behalf. And He not only will pray for the things we've written down, but He'll remember to pray for some things that we forget to pray for. He's, he, he doesn't forget anything. We all have had occasion to probably say we pray for something or pray for someone and we forgot to do it. But the Spirit of God does it. And He'll remind us. And when He does prompt us, make sure you take a minute and pray right there and ask the Lord to help you. And He'll not forget to petition the Father for what is best. Thankful we have a prayer partner, an intercessor in the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, take the truth this evening. And Lord, this is... A simple truth, and yet it's profound. I, I think it can be very, very helpful. And prayer changing in our lives. And I pray that each of us would always remember that when we go to prayer, that we have a prayer partner in the Holy Spirit of God. And that we would not ask amiss, improperly, out of order. We would ask in harmony. That it would everything we, we write down would seem good to us and to the Holy Ghost. That we would be in agreement. That we would know that you'd hear our prayer. And that we receive what we've requested of you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll finish praying here in just a moment. Wonder how many folks tonight would just say, Preacher, that truth has helped me this evening. And it's going to help my prayer life. And I plan to implement it as I go to prayer. Pastor, pray for me this evening. Will you lift your hand up, Christian? Praise God. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. What a, what a great thing that will be. Father, you've seen the hands that have been lifted. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to hearts. Lord, make us aware of your presence with us in all we do, especially when we go to you in prayer. Lord, we love you this evening. Thank you for each one that's been here tonight. Help us now to leave and to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And Lord, if you tarry, you're coming. Bring us back together for the Lord's Day on Sunday. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, those are in the back. Okay. They're on the back. Just pick one up and uh, take it with you. It's pretty self-explanatory. There is some explanation in the front if you need it. Uh, but I think it'll be a real blessing to you to have one of those daily journals. Okay. Let's sing Every Day with Jesus. It's sweeter than the day before. All right. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love Him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and He's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. God bless you. You're dismissed.